Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. So resuming our commentary on Revelation chapter 13. So let's open up our Bibles to Revelation chapter 13. And we left off at verse 16. Notice it says here, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. So uh, verse by verse, word for word, that's how these videos are done. So pay attention to every word as I try to explain it. For some of you have difficulty understanding each and every word in your Bible reading. That way you can get the common sense gist of the wordings. And also you want to check up if the words on how I explain it are accurately correct. You need to look for yourself, not just uh, listen to whatever some guy says, right? You have to check the preacher. Okay, so anyway, so verse 16, the false prophet causeth all. So he's the one that's causing everyone, both small and great. So that's basically the small areas to great areas, rich and poor, wealthy people or people in poverty, free and bond, people who are free or people who are in prison. Some people have the hypocrisy to say that slavery is gone. And uh, some of these people get uh, to the extreme about Black Lives Matter, down with white people, etc. And then you see these poor cases of uh, white people who have no idea being dragged out of the cars, be being beaten up by black people. Now, I'm not saying all black people are bad, so don't be culturally insensitive. But we are living in a day and age where not just black people, but all sorts of nationalities are getting culturally insensitive, uh, culturally sensitive, and using that to beat up people and blaming some other nationality and race about some form of slavery and etc. But you know, the Bible shows that in the tribulation that slavery is not gone. It's still going. Some of you don't realize it, but slavery is still going on. You might say, what is that? Well, in the Bible, what slavery is, is that one where people who are indebted to others, so then they have to serve the person. So they're like a servant. So that's the idea of a slave. So we get these kind of people who are uh, servants, waiters, waitresses, butlers, maids, etc. The second thing is this. The second thing is where you are seeing people in prisons. They're in bond. So that's in the Bible. Slaves were people who were held captive. They were prisoners. And they had to serve the community by doing community work. Ah, that's what you see in court, prisoners doing community service, community work, etc. But see what all of that is a slavery system, but that's just replaced with other words, juvenile system, correctional facility, community service, etc., etc. That way they mask the idea of slavery, but no, slavery is still going on. Today, that matches the way that the Bible does things with slavery. That's what you got to understand. It's not the idea of kidnapping innocent people, making them slaves, and making their lives miserable. Okay? That's actually condemned in the Bible. In the Bible, they had to treat slaves well, and the Bible condemned kidnapping innocent people and selling them as slaves. So anyways, down to the next point. So it doesn't matter when, whether you're free or you're bond, a prisoner or you're a free citizen. The false prophet would cause every one of them as well to receive a mark in their right hand. So they get a mark in their right hand. That's the infamous number 666, which we shall find at verse 18, and in their forehead. Now notice that it's a mark in the right hand and forehead. And without it, what happens? That in verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell. You're unable to buy or to sell things. Unless, what, save he that had the mark, with the exception of those who have that mark. So think about a mark system today where you're buying and selling things. Don't our, uh, underneath the cereal boxes, doesn't it have a mark underneath, a barcode? A lot of the food items, they have a barcode. Now, some interesting things is this, is that if you actually look underneath the barcode, and then you count the line strands underneath, you can actually divide it into three categories of sixes. 
666, which is pretty interesting. If you doubt me, you can check that out. So that's very uncanny. That's very uncanny. Uh, another interesting thing concerning about this economic system when you look at current events and times is that it says mark in their right hand and forehead. Now, especially with this COVID-19 situation, there are marketplaces where you're not allowed to come in unless they scan your forehead. Now, that's crazy, right? You can't even buy or sell. You can't enter a certain marketplace or business organization unless they scan your forehead. They're doing that. Why are they doing that? To see if you're diseased, if you have COVID-19 or etc. It's for safety precautionary measures. Now, I wonder if in the tribulation that's going to be the excuse of the false prophet enforcing everybody to have that mark and to scan. Another thing is this, is that if you think that it's crazy where you get the scan on the right hand or on the forehead, think about this. So many people, we want to do things with our hands, right? It makes things easier. So a lot of people aren't using cash. Why? Because it's just too much. Uh, it takes more effort compared to a credit card. Credit card is a lot more effortless. Just one scan, beep, you can buy the item. But where we are holding the credit card, that credit card has, the inf has our information and you gotta understand that the government maintains the information all, of all sorts of people. So then you got social security cards and you got driver's licenses. See, it's all by the hand, but imagine it's, if it's right here. And there are those RFID chips where they're putting it inside people's hands. And there are cases where if you look at certain YouTube clips, and if you doubt YouTube clips, you can actually watch old news episodes where there were certain marketplaces where people just scanned with their right hand and were able to buy an item actually why because it's easier another thing is this is that where it goes from credit card now it's going to an iPhone something technology wise technology that you can do all sorts of things and you're holding in your hand and all you have to do is scan it then it goes to now you got the Apple has a watch where it's getting closer to your right hand. What's next, right over here? Makes you wonder. Not only that, Google has these uh, interesting computer goggles where you can enter a virtual, a so-called virtual reality. But imagine if the mark of the beast is something technological, which we're getting into more and more, as you can see with this buying and selling in our current events, it's more and more technological. If that's the case, makes you wonder that with this Google thing, it can eventually go to your forehead. Now, this is technology-wise. Another thing as I heard is also this ID2020, which is supposedly going to have the mark of the beast and retains all your information. Uh, another thing is also where it talks about, I've heard where because of this coronavirus situation, where there can be vaccines coming out, and then with these vaccines, it can contain the mark of the beast and that Bill Gates was one of the people promoting it. Now, I haven't delved into too much research in all these other things about ID2020 and et cetera. But the reason why I'm telling you all this is, look, if you look at our current events, there are so many things where we're actually capable of making a mark system technologically where it can keep track of everybody which makes sense if you look at this verse at verse 16 it's keeping track of everybody all causeth all see small gray rich poor free and bond see it's keeping track of everybody so we are at a day and age where we can reach that capability of a technology that can keep track of everybody in a buying and selling process now not just technologically but let's talk about religiously how the devil can use this Religiously, it's talking about a mark in the right hand or in their forehead. Think about a religion that puts a mark on your forehead. You ever see the Hindu religion or the Eastern religions where they talk about a third eye or they'll put a dot on their forehead? Mm, how about that? What about the Roman Catholic Church? They put an ash on their forehead? How about that? And remember the Antichrist, he's going to, his religion is going to be Roman Catholic. 
the mark of the beast, right? What's the mark of the Roman Catholic beast, Roman Catholic Antichrist? That's something food for thought. So we see religiously, we see technologically speaking, that this mark is really making a way real soon. We're getting there. Scary times, scary times. Now, there's one interesting thing over here that I find out is that if you look at verse 15, the false prophet, he makes everybody receive the mark at verse 16. If they don't, if you return to verse 15, which I already commented in the previous video, if they don't worship this image of the beast, then he's going to be killed. Now, think about this, all right? This is why I can see more and more that it would make more sense that the Antichrist would be a Catholic Pope figure, and then the false prophet could be more of a different religious figure. And one of the different religious figures that I can give a much open door to and possibility is Islam. So rather than a Muslim Antichrist, I could see more of a Muslim false prophet. You might say, how so? Because notice right over here that at verse 15 and 16, think about a prophet that people are looking up to who believed in killing people and not only that how are they killed they're killed by being beheaded revelation chapter 20. wow think about a religion that teaches a prophet who enforces people to convert to a religion by the sword and beheading think about what kind of a religion would do that that's like mohammed right in islam now think about this islam the greatest person that they respect in the in, in all of history is Muhammad. Why? Because he's considered the greatest among the prophets. See that? They're all looking for a prophet. But the Bible says that's going to be the false prophet. As a matter of fact, the Muslims, they are looking forward to that day when it would happen. But think about the Roman Catholics. Who is the greatest person that they think on the earth? It's the Pope. And the Pope is actually known as the shepherd to them. The Pope, he is actually known as Christ on earth in Roman Catholic dogmas and teachings, actually. That he's known, see, as Christ representative, the false Christ. And then the Muslims consider their true prophet, but the Bible calls him false prophet. See that? I think that would make a lot more sense. It can connect much better that way. So we can see right over here that this is a lot of interesting stuff concerning about the false prophet figure as well as the Antichrist figure. But here's some more clues about the Antichrist being Roman Catholic. We can see over here, and that which we read, verse 17, no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, right? But here's the next part, or the name of the beast. So these people also have to maintain the name of the beast or the number of his name, or the number. A lot of people think this way, that the mark of the beast has to be one specific thing. And that's why a lot of people are wondering, so uh, why does Brother Kim talk about all different types of the mark of the beast? Well, you gotta realize this, Satan has a variety for his Antichrist mark system, because you see at verse 17 already, it's mark, name of the beast, or number of his name. A credit card system, it would contain a name and a number, and it also has a symbol mark. That's very interesting, isn't it? Uh, people, they don't have to necessarily have all three because of verse 17. It says, or, 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 mark, or name, or number. So if you're a Catholic, you could probably have this on your forehead. If you're a Hindu, you could perhaps have this in your forehead. If you're a full-blown atheist, Man, you could probably just have one, uh, you can have something in your right hand where it would have, just like a credit card, name, number, and mark. See, well, you got to realize this. Satan is going to cover all bases to make sure people will have some form of a satanic mark. That's the key right there. That's the key to understand. Now, the thing over here is that Dr. Rutman gave an interesting quote concerning about the Antichrist, which I will be reading over here. So we see at verse 17, the Antichrist, there's all kinds of different things about him. His mark, name, and number. 
Dr. Uttman mentions it this way. He says, 666, hex, hex, hex. We have his name. It's Judas Iscariot. We have his mark. It's a black spot. We have his sign. It's a kiss. We have his religion. He's a Roman Catholic. We have his nationality. He's Hamitic Syrian Jew. We have his power. He gets it from the devil. We have his number, 666. Man, that's something right there. A lot of gold mines. But, <clears throat> but continuing on over here, we do know that the Antichrist, he is going to be Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot will be resurrected from the pit, returned to the body of the Antichrist. Um, we can look at some of that later on at the book of Revelation chapter 17. I can explain that a little more. But for now, I'm just going to simply gloss through that because there's so much material that I want to cover over here concerning about the mark of the beast. One of the things is this, is that notice it's the mark of the beast. Now remember, what is the beast when we return to the first verses? It says right over here, if we look at verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a what? Leopard. Mark of this particular beast, the leopard. Mark of the leopard then. So what is the mark of the leopard? Have you ever noticed what the mark of the leopard looked like? I don't know if some people ever noticed that. It's a black spot. But when you look more closely at the black spot, it looks like a kiss mark. Isn't that very interesting? It's like a kiss mark. Remember, the Antichrist is supposed to be a man of what? Peace, right? Now, when people during biblical times want to bid each other peace, you know how they greeted each other with peace? They did it with a kiss. Have you ever seen uh, the Roman Catholic Church? What did they do a lot of practicing? If they revere the Pope, they kiss him. How about that? Absalom, who's a great type of the Antichrist, what did he do? He kissed them. His name also means man of peace. Judas Iscariot, who was going to revive within the body of the Antichrist, what did he do to greet Jesus Christ? With a kiss. Why? Because that was a particular greeting of peace. When, but in reality, it was betrayal. So this Antichrist still have a kiss, so it's very possible that one of the ways to receive the mark of the beast is where the Antichrist will kiss your forehead. Think about a particular relig a religion that does that. The Pope, right? Everybody wants to see or touch the Pope when they enter Vatican City, and then the Pope, what he can do with the little children or other people, kisses their forehead as a sign of some form of blessing. Well, how about that? That's something to think about. All righty, let's look at the next part over here. Verse 18, here is wisdom. Ah, now notice over here that the Bible talks about having wisdom. So in other words, if you are going to be wise, this is not dumb, this is not foolishness. If you're going to be wise, then what? Let him that hath understanding. So if you do have understanding, See, if you're not dumb, if you're not foolish, if you have some form of understanding, count the number of the beast. You have to count the beast's number. For it is the number of a man. The beast, so we see right here, he is man. The Antichrist is truly like the Son of Man, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. That's what the Antichrist tries to picture, see? Because Jesus Christ is what? God incarnate. The Antichrist is the devil incarnate. So we see that over here. It's going to be humanism. So this Mark of the Beast system is all about humanism. It is about worshiping the devil and Satan. And we see that over here about verse 15. The Mark of the Beast is about worshiping the Antichrist. We also see verse 4 that they worship not only the Antichrist, but they also worship Satan. Satan worship. Man will be Satan worship, but it's not done where an atheist is saying, 
oh, okay, I don't believe in this God stuff this, that the devil exists, so I'm not going to worship Satan. No, it's based on humanism where you can worship Satan because it says right here the number of the beast, right? You have to worship the beast if you receive his number. But look at this, for it is the number of a man. It's based on humanism. Atheism, liberalism is all based on secular humanism. The millennial generation, the next generations that are coming up, our school, our education, is promoting so much on humanism. So you got to realize this, how the Antichrist and Satan receives worship is based off of humanism. That's very important to understand. So even if the atheist does not acknowledge about the existence of the devil, the existence of the Antichrist, ha, 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 well, guess what? If they take that mark of the beast, that is a sign that they have to acknowledge worshipping the Antichrist, worshipping the devil. That's what's going to lead to one day. Okay, so it's the number of a man.